thank you very much. It's great to be back in Cleveland. You guys are a great crowd. Got a lot of people that are really into the scene here. A lot of the underground stuff like this East and Roger Moore. Next song is going to go out to Sin Eater uh, for letting us stay at their place and being cool guys. So it's Pittsburgh Penguins roll. Blackhawks blow. Too bad they're in Chicago. Who gives a fuck? Huh? Too bad they're in Chicago. Who gives a fuck? Fuck you all. I don't give a fuck. Right, she got you riled up, Jack. What's going on? Death Metal Podcast coming on Saturday night. How's it going, everybody? Thank you for everyone checking in uh, for to Death Metal Podcast. We were on last night with uh, the promoters of the New Jersey Death Fest and Gutter Christ and uh, the wrestler Slack. From uh, he's also in Call the Paramedics, so it was pretty sick, man. What's up, Carney? Carney coming hard lately. What's going on, everybody? How's it going? How's your night? So tonight, um, too, I wanted to make an announcement at the top here. We got Death Metal Podcast shirts, uh, pocket print shirts, and we got Death Metal Podcast zipper hoodies. Uh, they're in this, both of my stores. If you guys are interested, um, there's shirts and zipper hoodies, basically, for Death Metal Podcast. And they're at necroharmonic.com or necroharmonic big cartel. So, you know we need merch because I make fucking shirts, but yet I have no merch, which is kind of funny. Or never trying to crush it with it. But the thing is, doing the show is all about the show, not about the merch. <laughs> so, like, I, you know, I've, I'm 122 episodes deep on this right now, which I think is kind of crazy for me. Um, you know, I didn't expect to do that much. I mean, a bunch of our shit got banned and also, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to talk about too. So, I mean, I think that, you know, you know, death metal is its own Netflix, you know how it is. So tonight we're going to talk about, um, you know, like demos and seven inches as usual, you know, like maybe not as usual, but you know, just go down a deeper, uh, you know, uh, you know, talk about and play maybe some things to try to um, put them in perspective, you know? Or maybe, you know, maybe I have some certain experiences with the people in the bands because I wrote to them to buy the demo, you know, or something. Not not everything on here is like that, but sometimes I just, uh, you know, I get the freaking stuff on YouTube like everyone else or wherever. Greetings, uh, Ecuador. Cheers, man. So thank you for tuning in, and um, you need that zipper? Thank you. Yeah, if you want to support the show, I mean, that's kind of the way, too. So, the, the websites, and so, yeah, and also necroharmonic.com, so, and we have other shirts, too. So, appreciate uh, that people tuned into this, and last night's episode was funny as fuck. Um, like, I asked a lot of questions about, like, uh wrestling stuff because i don't know too much about it you know and now they're smashing each other in the face with fucking like bottles and you know like yeah i was like what was the craziest thing thing you saw you know <laughs> like stuff like that so because he's been running the circuit so so anyway um we're gonna play some demos and some weird stuff that i have been listening to this week basically that's the show <laughs> Oh, uh. 
That's what's up. So, um, Abyssals from France. Uh, pretty uh, obscurity that sounds like an old uh, Morbid Angel demo. So, um, here's uh, one, you know, back in the day, uh, I was a heavy tape trader. So, like, basically, I would write, I would write to all the bands that logos look the best. Or if I saw their, like, review things, and it said, like, this band sounds like say morbid angel demo you know or say they said morbid angel at the time so i was like oh you know i think i could uh take a chance and you know try to buy this to hate or whatever but back then you had to send uh cash in the mail and you would put it in an envelope and write out like a address to someone in a foreign country and then um you know so but like i when i figured i was going to do that i was like you know what like i'm gonna try to take my writing to these people to the a little just extra you know and um so i would like you know just uh, try to talk to them you know like what you know what's it like over there and what are bands you hang out with and just stupid questions you know it's just and then they would write back to me and it would be like it would continue on after that like you had a pen pal in another country so, um, you know, but what was exciting, though, is it came with its own soundtrack. So, like, this was one of the bands I wrote to. I mean, I don't remember their letters being extravagantly long, but I wrote to them multiple times before they put this out. When they put this out, I sent a tape and they put it, uh, they taped it onto my tape because I used to send blank tapes to people. 
So uh, check this out. So yeah, man, back in the day, because of abhorrence was so brutal, and um, we would all, in New Jersey, I would hang out with like uh, Putrefact and Incantation guys and stuff, and we would all uh, listen to Abhorrence 7-inch uh, and some of the early like Seraphic Decay type stuff, and uh, Disgrace, Abhorrence, you know, Cathedral demos and stuff, and then Amorphous definitely, the demo was pretty sick. What's up, that goat metal show? The last time I got a tape in the mail was during the early Metal Maniac wrote a seance demo, got their demo. I think that was supposed to send 10 bucks. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, you had to send money, right? You had to send, like, I was li just listening to Abhorrence or 91 from the demo. Cool, man. The, um, the, the stuff on it, they put out extras, like, with the Svart uh, box set, too. Which one of them was like the something masquerade uh, demo rehearsal or something? Uh, that that label has some like will come with like a, some next level like uh, underground, un unreleased recording like a Zizma Zizma one, where it has like some kind of rehearsal or something on some like ninety dollar vinyl five five fucking LP vinyl. I mean, I, I appreciate vinyl and I wouldn't mind having that Zizma box set. 
but I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, I should have bought it as soon as it came out, first of all. And secondly, like, I just don't, it's hard to pull the trigger on $90 vinyl, dude, you know? Like, it's just so different. Like, I think it was 80 at that moment. And then fucking, basically, you know, like, you know, you're, to this moment, I'm like, well, what were those songs? Like, what was that? I want to hear that. You know, like they didn't send that to me and that wasn't in the tape trading circuit. Because if you, you know, if you knew your band or you you knew their music, after you've looked at like six, you know, like not 60, say like 30, you know, 20, 10, 20, 30 people's lists, you could kind of figure out like what the band's full discography or releases were. So, you know, so if you saw something new on there and you liked the band and you were super into it, you know, and you'd probably ask, like, what's that? And sometimes you would get a copy of something you had already. It was just had a different name. It had, like, the name of the first song on the album or something. Sometimes the demos would become like that. But it is what it is. I have that Zizma box set. I got it for Christmas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. Deluxe. <laughs> they put out that promo demo on, uh, which I liked. They sent that to me in the mail. It was like a fucking... I showed a... a some of the information on that in the finished video this was a um i'll talk to this before i play this this was a, a good show for me because um i had been right into this band like you know when i was young they were the earlier Finnish band that i was writing to and uh the all you know i was writing into multiple members and um you know they, the tapes they were sending back were so cool and the letters and long and you know just cool dudes uh, they came and played Maryland Death Fest, and then they did had the Arch Goat, the early Arch Goat drummer was the guitar player. So, like, me and him, you know, I know the guy. I've met the guy at multiple festivals, so, like, we've hung out a few times, you know? We just, you know, that's how it is when you go to metal fests. Like, you can, you end up hanging out with uh, people, whatever, you know? <laughs> I didn't even know he was an Arch Goat until maybe, like, the second round. <laughs> But, uh, basically, um, the, uh, the, he was the guitar player and the, and the sound that they had, man, was like, it was really like the, it stayed true to the, their sound. So the, the band was Demigod and this is from the show. <laughs>
The camera, yeah. I forgot about it. I gotta get some camera the camera motherfuckers on here. Because they get to go the closest. I forgot to show this uh, before. This this was the tape that I got from the Morphous. So, there was a, um, the Privilege... Pr Dismant of Soul demo. Excuse me. And like I said, they put it back on my own tape. Because I, I would send a, a good quality tape. <laughs> you know, because I wanted to get a good recording of the band. So, I, you know, I knew they had a demo out uh, after Abhorrence. I didn't even know much about the band when I really got went to go get this. But I was like, ah, so I was into Abhorrence, you know? So I was going for the next level of... Which Amorphous, you know, up to, like, a lot of people were saying up to a thousand lakes, so... I got, I got you on that, you know? Like, I was... Like, I was hanging around with Relapse. I, that's probably around when I stopped hanging around with them. But, uh... You know, Bill Yusurkowitz and, um... You know, was they knew they knew good stuff, you know, you know, and also you know like they were, they were around they were around other death metalers, yeah. So um, so yeah, we started the show with Mythic, and then uh, let's see what we got here. I wanted to um, I wanted to play this as a shout out to my boys. Uh, we made some shirt. We put together some shirts uh, with them. In this demo. <laughs>
that uh, that promo demo '96 Vulcan. Uh, this amazing uh, that they, you know, went and made a demo. So hang around to Death Metal Podcast watchers because we're going to be giving away a free Death Metal Podcast shirt. So yeah, the we made some merch with pocket print shirts. So I don't know if we're whatever. <laughs> There we go. So if you want to cop one, go to the website. Appreciate it. We're going to be giving some one away though to the show. In, uh, for the US though, please. <laughs> so what's going on, guys? Evoke it, man. I mean, the demos speak for themselves. And then that being just a promo demo. Like, it wasn't even one of the releases. But uh, sick fucking song. I always uh, appreciate a good evoking. The, uh, we have a, a new Vulcan release shirts, actually. Uh, Shades of Night Descending and um, Anathesis of Light. Anathesis? Anathesis of Light. And The Last of Vitality. So if you guys are interested, I've been making these in the laboratory last on and off so many days, you know. Just, you know, you got to per- make the perfection of, you know, try to do your best work. Um... You know, as I don't know who knows or doesn't know, but like, you know, we print our own shirts. So it's kind of weird even that right now I'm putting out this, you know, (laughs) Death Metal Podcast shirts, you know. And I I wanted to keep it simple, you know, and uh, just, you know, represent fucking Death Metal, man. Uh, Why not? So uh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Last last night's episode was pretty sick. Uh, Schlack, uh, the wrestler. And Gutter, um, they have a lot of fucking stories, man. So, like, uh, the episode was pretty banging. So, if you guys didn't get to check it out, it's uh, the New Jersey Death Fest edition. Where uh, the guys from Dripping were on there, Gutter Christ, Lord Marco, who's the touring drummer with Six Feet Under. And then uh, Schlack and Waking the Cadaver. Uh, Lord Marco plays in Waking the Cadaver. He played the fest. So, it was a pretty sick episode, man. Schlack is maniac. I asked all kinds of crazy fucking questions and shit. Like, yo, what's the craziest shit you ever did, man? <laughs> you know, like, what's the sickest fucking thing you ever seen at a show, you know? Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I mean, we need some merch for Death Metal Podcast. Last night's episode was awesome. It was, man. It was sick. It's, I think it scared and peed, though. We left comments. <laughs> Schlack made me nervous. <laughs> Hey, man, they're, we're built, you know, I'm from New Jersey, so we're built different, you know? Kind of maniacs. Schlack and gut rule. Last night show ruled. It did, man. It was sick. I was happy to, uh, I was happy to talk to Schlack, because I don't know too much about, like, the underground wrestling scene too much. And it's just sick that he's in a band. He's in, like, several bands. Like, he was in, I, I booked his band, like, years ago, or gutter booked them. Because we used to, like, do co-bookings. And that band was called Call the Paramedics. And then it was like, oh, like, at the end of the show, I understood why their name was called the Paramedics, man. The guy was fucking bloody, dude. He was a madman Viking. He's a madman in real life, and I've been around him a lot, um, you know, years ago, and partying, and just all kinds of shenanigans. So, uh, things we can't talk about out here. (laughs) Um, I'm gonna play something from that I think is basically one of the demo classics, and I can't play do a demo show without playing this.
last night, uh, we were also talking about, uh, because the show was like, you know, it was like, what you know, like brutal death metal. So people are always talking about like slam and, you know, sometimes black death metal scene doesn't seem to gel with the brutal death metal scene. But, uh, you know, we just offhand, we were mentioning and talking and um, Sebastian from Dripping brought up a good point because we were like, somebody was saying like, who's the first slam band, you know? And then, um, you know, ideas were thrown around, talked about, and then he was like, well, kind of immolation, (laughs) you know, like I know suffocation was really early on too, but like immolation, like they kind of had like the part, that one part that was like, just like a slam part, basically, you know, like the mosh part, but it was, you know, it was different. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody likes what they like too. So there's different aspects of death metal, I think, as far as there's black metal, too. And then there's, you know, like atmospheric fucking death metal, black metal, grindcore, you know, uh, fastcore. <laughs> like, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, you know, there's several genres of death metal alone. Now, I mean, they have subcategorized them into names, obviously. So, um... I mean, I like everything that's, you know, different, you know, heavier and brutal. The, um, today I got an email at Death Metal Podcast, um, that, uh, because I was doing the demo edition of this, but I got an email from Lori Bravo from Nuclear Death and, uh, she's like, Hey, play some Nuclear Death, you know? So I was like, Oh shit. Like, cool, man. It was cool to get a message from Lori Bravo and Nuclear Death fucking ruled, man. So, like, I wanted to play a show that I was at. It was in G. Willikers, and uh, it was fucking bananas. So, what are you doing? Well, Thank <laughs> you. 
Nuclear death. I had to play it live, you know, because I w that was uh, John Verica took the video of that, I'm sure, because it was at G. Willikers. So shout out to John Verica. I thought he would pop up in the chat as soon as I played that. So shout out to John, though, man. He always uh, documented, like, the shit that we were around, so, and up close. So it, uh, that nuclear death show was definitely sick. Um, a uh, long time ago. <laughs> Uh, what's up, man? How's it going? Cam Medical Pathologist. Hey, what's up, Mike Abominator, too? Next week, me and Mike Abominator are going to have a show on Saturday that is going to be about the demos again, man. You know, but we're going to come from Mike's point of view, too, with the Cali scene. And then Mike worked for Wild Rag, so he knows all about nuclear death. So... So, uh, was that the show with both Nuclear Death and Gorephobia? That's correct. Yeah, it was a Nuclear Death and Gorephobia and a couple other bands. There was another band from down, uh, down the way in Philly that I was friendly with. Um, they didn't, you know, they really, there was a few actually, so I wanted to play a few, but, uh, this band, um, you know, I feel like they didn't get, like, their love, and they're still due to get it. Um, and maybe Necroharmonic will give it. They will.
Yeah, Necrosion. So, yeah, they had another band, Symphony of Grief, and they're sick as fuck. I mean, they, um, since you mentioned it, Mike Abominator, we, uh, we should play some Symphony of Grief. I should encode a song that's un, unheard of Symphony of Grief, if I could find a tape. Because there's a have like a live soundboard of them that they played a show at Autopsy, and um, it, it it's I never I never I was gonna put it out, you know. Like there's things that you I I talked to Necrosion and Symphony of Grief about working on, you know. Sometimes it's been uh they have a new thing though that we would put out first of everything, because that's their best stuff. So um yeah man Necrosion that was an old old Necrosion thing too. I'm gonna show it right here. I got it at G. Willikers, I guess, or from, uh, I w maybe I was at John's house. So there was, this was the release, though, on cassette. This is the original cassette tape, which I'm sure there wasn't many of these spread around back in the day. So, Necrosion Promo 92. And this was the track that, the track we listened to was Unimmaculate Conception. So this was the original OG promo demo. So you won't see, you probably won't see too many things like this around. The um, on Death Metal podcast, and also next week, like I said, with Mike Abominator, you know, we'll show you the crazy demos. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I li you know, I live this scene. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but like, I live this. You know, so it's like I'm beyond, beyond just uh, yeah, sarcophago. Fuck yeah, dude death metal museum in a way in, in a weird way you you move around here and it can get a little museum like um there was this band uh that i was listening to today they're from uh I'll slow things down a little um they basically they were uh had members of other bands they were like members of like eternal darkness and anathemia uh from finland or whatever I, I don't know if i'm saying the name right but check it out <laughs>
check it out on your own. <laughs> the band's called September. Yeah, it was members of Crypto Kerberos and uh, Eternal Darkness and um, this band right here. Which are, they're sick too. I mean, I put them in the early on. It's weird because they're from Finland, so this must this band must have straddled like the Finnish. I know a lot of the guys from Eternal Darkness, like they're Finnish. So I wonder if like you know the place where they live straddles Sweden, because they're 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 called a Swedish death metal band, but there's Finnish members too. <laughs> podcast <laughs> what's going on everybody so yeah there's a good there's a good amount of people watching there's also people watch on facebook so sometimes we see a different number too uh wanted to let any new viewers or anyone that didn't see we put out death metal podcast uh pocket print shirts and death metal podcast zipper hoodies so i left the word podcast off there so you could just rep death metal alone so uh basically um if you guys want to check it out check the shop necroharmonic.com and then um death metal podcast is not sponsored so you know we don't uh you know take donations or whatever we'll just do um we just do shows man and then uh it's, you know try to support uh new bands and old shit 
So including including alternative scenes in a way too. Like if if I could do one on Doom, Doom Metal, I would probably fuck with that. But there's not really that much around me. Um, not not late, not currently. You know, but uh, but basically, um, yesterday's episode, yeah, was the recap of NJ Death Fest. So for me, you know, I had put out both Dripping and Waking a Cadaver releases with Gutter Christ. So you know, we um go back pretty far, and then Schlack Schlack took over, you know, kind of in the slot, uh, and he says it, and it's real. He took over in the slot of you know me booking shows in Jersey. Cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to get involved in booking anymore. I just wanted to be done. Got to get me a hoodie of Death Metal Podcast, definitely, dude. Where are you all? Where are you all connecting, people? Yeah, like where? Where is everyone from? I know, I know, you're from New Zealand, right? And and Pete is from Cali. My homeboy here is from like Wisconsin or some shit. And uh, Justin, Cali, New York. Uh, Stefan Goldberg, Mike Abominator from Ruin is a fucking Cali boy. Cali man, Rockaway, okay. So yeah, this show was about New Jersey Death Fist, um, which I actually helped set up the first one, actually. And uh, there was the book, the first Dismas show, and then Womb played, and Incantation, Gorophobia, a lot of shit. Evoking, um... A bunch of a bunch of fucking bands. It was supposed to be Dripping was playing that show. They were in the room and didn't play. And then Flem was supposed to play, but Jim uh, Jim Fleet was on a bracelet or he was like on a he was on probation, so he couldn't. They wouldn't let him leave the state basically. So Flem couldn't play that Jersey Death Fest. He did play a later one. So rest in peace to Jim. I'm glad you got to play in Jersey. Um, I was, uh, digging around in my old photos and I had seen this old, uh, Swedish picture because usually before I do some of these like demo shows, you know, I'm just like, well, I'm going to, you know, talk about things that I was involved with or things that I actually did, you know, because that way the, the history levels on here are real because they're coming from a person that did it. So this is a scan from an old zine, but this old lineup of, uh, unleashed they were um you know they came to new york and uh were chilling with like will uh romer and um ross dolan and then uh, uh sharon from Dracada and stuff so it was like kind of like you know a very communal scene to have like these death metalers come from sweden to new york and then have like a fucking you know get together with other um you know cool like-minded death metal heads yeah, see those sick Merciless shirts and then Septic Death, Carbonize, and the early demo Immolation. This might have even been taken in someone's room, like Ross from Immolation or something. I'm not really sure. But basically, um, I had the, uh, you know, it was just like kind of looking out. And I was like looking at this old Utter Dark fucking demo, you know? We're not going to play it right now or anything, but I just, uh, this this demo was tight, man. This was really good. Demo 190. 1990 was a good year for death metal. So this was, um, you know, it was the, the production was tight. And, you know, writing to the band was uh, good, too, because they were very friendly and cool. And, you know, made, you know, it was like it was exciting to have like pen pals in like Sweden and stuff. And I used to write to the drummer, I remember. And I wrote to Johnny. Fuck yeah, Unleashed, OG Unleashed, Small World back then. Anders is my boy. Yeah, Anders. Roy, uh, how long did you do booking for? Um, is this, you know, Randy Kasner from AI area? I do. Um, he's had Hell's Heroes right now. I did booking, I did booking as far back as 1991. Because I booked this show, I booked this show with Pain Eater from Florida. This scuzzy fucking death metal band with just a bass player and a singer. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I said the band was from Kearney, New Jersey. And then I basically got a show booked at uh, this place called Studio One. And then I sold tickets for the show. And, and I, um, the dude, like, like they we almost got into like a fight or whatever. So it was like a, they were yelling at the crowd. And there was a bunch of fucking shit going down. And 
these guys snuck baseball bats in because they were scared that something was going to go down and fucking and then at the end of the night like the promoter guy Pete Tersha uh, he said he's like hey man that band's they're not from Jer- Carney they're from fucking Florida you know I was like yeah you know <laughs> and I was young dude you know I was like 19 I don't fucking know and uh, he's like he goes they, you know you got you sold the most tickets here tonight though you know I was like yeah and uh, he's like, yeah, he sold like 27 tickets or something. And I was like, oh, man, that's cool, man. I was like, I can't believe that 27 of my fucking friends or people liked or gave a fuck to buy a fucking ticket to see fucking Pain Eater. So, I mean, shout out to them, man. <laughs> um, so I, that's where my booking started. And then, you know, years later, I went into a whole saga of a place called Hartley's, which was like, that was like a years and years later thing now. So, you know, may I, that might deserve its own show in a way, like, because it has a lot of history on it. And, you know, another Necroharmonic Netflix miniseries. Till then, um, I wanted to, uh, I was listening to, um, you know, this uh, tape uh, that I have here, and I haven't listened to it in a while. But my man, uh, Rick, will show up in the chat here sometimes. And uh, he was, like, on in all these bands, like, really, like, grinding demo bands. And there was just, like, multiple, one after another after another. And um, I noticed, I, I was listening to a tape, and then I noticed at the end of, like, a side A or whatever, I was like, is that motherfucking Incantation? They, they covered Incantation? So this is the band. I'm going to play a double shot for them, and uh, but check out the Incantation first.
that was uh, that was the incantation uh, cover. So yeah, that secret life. There was uh, Rick from Sloth. This was their demo. They had a band called Church Burner too, and that's pretty electronic, but more like Black Death. So this was the demo. They were they were their own scene, like ext extreme scene records. It was just around for like two or three years, and then there was a guy named Tyler, and there was a bunch of dudes like. And they put out really fucking sick ass old demos like of good you know that i mean that was tight because i remember listening to this demo but i didn't remember it having an incantation cover on it and then i was listening to it again i was like oh man listen to that fucking yeah like the sound <laughs> that sound on it's crazy but I, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna play one of their regular songs so that way you guys can kind of get a feel of like you know what it, they sound like without the you know like what their regular songs sound like so check it out. Killing for real. It was for you. So the the secret life demo. It was a, a, a the label was um, back in the day. It was like a tape label, and they put out a comp tape, and they put out like a, a multiple tapes of their own like friends bands, and sometimes um, Chris from Future Faction is in the chat here. Extreme Scene Records, and then uh, they did the Rotted Head uh, comp. So back then they had the Morgue Fetus, Catasexual, Dismember Fetus. Uh, Gorborg, which is another like a like kind of like Secret Life, but maybe di it's different. It's like a different type of cyber death metal, cybergasm on there, and then Sloth, Secret Life, Church Burner, Putrefaction, Gonculator. That was the comp. That was the, uh, and they had like exclusive tracks on the comp, so it was pretty sick. 
so yeah man that was a pretty wild yeah it was definitely body melts uh worship it was uh made in like probably like 95 to 96 era and then somebody said that the drum beat or the bass or whatever that is that's the standard sound that's on like a boss 550 or whatever so that they use it as the bass or whatever or they whatever something similar has everyone ever heard furnace cremated souls seven inch from texas similar industrial gore grind sound definitely yeah we've played that on here and uh the heart um hardware too furnace and hardware are pretty sick they're just different stuff you know like and you know maybe somebody even it gets into the beherit um you know uh industrial type records or whatever or morbid angel kind of kind of industrial record thing there's i've uh, been in uh in like a you know kind of somber fucking black metal fucking mood for like days and days and um this came up uh you know for in, that i wanted to play because i remember listening to this when i was uh younger and uh i always i always like the band i don't know too much about them but their demo is fucking phenomenal
So, I mean, you know, not complete fucking utter fucking war metal, but, you know, just dark and, you know, gloomy. There's a, you know, I've been in the, the gloom zone. There was this, uh, I fuck with too. I think it's called Mulvet. Crazy shit. That fool in the picture looks like he needs a dog hug. No doubt. Um, so yeah, I can't really pronounce the band's name, but it's like Mohwet. With a M O M M O E with the thing over it. V O T. The o with the thing over it. The Evzer Vesbeter Rebbe Zevedel Magabza something demo. So, um, you know, I mean, it's still dark to me. Like, I like darkness. Total darkness, man. This, uh, this episode is just like, you know, it, it, I wanted it to, like, go up and down, you know? Like, and I feel like it does at times. There's stuff I want to play that's, like, a lot faster, but then, you know, it get the show gets a little dismal. So, um, next up, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, this was um, an old Swedish band that I thought was one of my one of my favorites, and no one talks about them. I love them. Put that shit out.
obscene, grotesque experience uh, demo from Sweden from 1990. Fucking incredible demo, man. Darkness and Doom. It's like you have such a deep uh, demo experience. You know what's cool, too? I, this is just my opinion of, you know, uh, that basically even though, you know, back years and years ago, like, people would send tapes to each other or whatever, you could get a tape now, like, you know, like, I got this Leprophiliac one, you know, like, a couple of years ago, but, like, I got tapes uh, from Purulency from Catalogari Records pretty recently. You know, so like a, like a label there, but, you know, like I might have got this from the band or a label, I don't remember. But basically, you know, like you could still get like tapes, you know, like, you know, it's like the experience is like still there, you know. Like, you know, you might, the thing is like, you know, you might not get every tape, you know, you might not, you know, like, but eventually if someone puts it out or something. See, some of the tapes like we had, they were like dubs, you know. So, there'd be, like, multiple things on here. This has Nuclear Death and Order from Chaos on here with Execration. But the, the Execration shit is the rare stuff, you know? Maybe this is the way. So. Yeah, man. Definitely, dude. I mean, I just, you know, I figured a rep it. Like, gotta show people the um, good stuffs. The uh, same with the obscene, like, there's you know, there's not enough people listening to it, in my opinion. So, I mean, I try to come on here and uh, put it on. The um, uh, in in the Philly scene, too, I, uh, I think I was mentioning this earlier, I just didn't get to talk about it. There was this other band, too. Um, they were uh, they would play like a show or something, and then um, one of the members like went on to do some multiple other bands, and so they were called Cemetery Earth. This is demo. Terry Earth from uh, Philly. 
area or maybe like lower jersey and philly combined i'm not really sure but i knew the dudes and the band the good stuff it was uh the demo was from 92 and they would play um you know they would play like a show at g willikers or something you know in the in the old like gorephobia type scene if i'm not mistaken jack uh from who did tomb uh or tombs with uh a, a hellhammer from um um uh, uh, mayhem uh they you know he's he was in that band so good stuff i mean i took uh good uh, vibrating your speakers <laughs> for real you know like i i want this show too to like take it back you know like i was i go down these rabbit holes of like metal and just you know just like oh photos like who like who the fuck has photos you know anymore like people need this in their life you know this one has cooch from uh Gorephobia, he who passed away. And uh, Spencer, who plays in uh, Crucifier, I believe. And played, who knows what he played in back then. I think he was in Gorephobia at that time. Or or Crucifier, I'm not even sure. He was in multiple slints. And he did a label, too. But uh, yeah, this was John Arcucci from uh, Gorephobia. If you just happen to see this photo, like, just... I was cleaning up the shelves so I didn't put the flags up, you know? So, try to uh, rip the demos. And then, um, you know, show show some tapes off because the show was about like tapes, cool PA, other cool PA bands, Rochevor, Crucifier, Gehenna, Cemetery Earth, Haunted, Therinity, Migos, definitely, Atricide, Afterbirth, Divination, Jesus, yeah, those are the obscurest ones, dude. Can't uh, the grotesque, definitely, dude. Yeah, fucking Mike. Fuck yeah, dude. The grotesque stuff is amazing. I was at that show when you guys did the live stream. I, I remember we talked about it early. Next next uh next week me and Mike will be together on Saturday doing a uh, show like this, but two fucking maniacs with demos. You know? I mean I just want, you know, that um there's you know there's like an oral history behind these tapes i think so that's why probably the show happens i mean i'm sometimes don't want to do it but i feel like you know if i could talk to it then um you know and let people know like hey i fucked with this or i wrote with this band da, da, da. you know i think it's you know that's interesting like this band right here intermint from finland uh, you know, I put a CD, a mini CD out with this man. So, I mean, they were, you know, the demo 90, like, look at this flyer. Like, would you, would you send your five bucks to this? You might, right? Fuck yeah. Grotesque rules. Evisium. Fucking Evisium. Amazing. I fucking love Evisium, man. And the PA scene is just deep in general. There was, um... Let me see here now. We're going to take it into another scene back to Jersey. There was a release where it had a lost record, which was like, this was supposed to be like the follow-up to the debut record. But then basically they never finished it and they never put it out. And they get the record label got fucked up and the record label had put out tons of shit. And then they, I guess they, the band just kind of just dissolved after doing this recording and then uh some of the members play down like pretty famous bands and others are in their own zones and played in many bands and, and others are maniac drummers who go fishing all the time so uh old uh ripping corpse unreleased album from 92 <laughs> But the dark will ruin me Black are you, my nature Let loose on silver screen Seven o'clock, this darkness Seems it won't return
Obscure uh, Ripping Corpse uh, release that never came out. If I thought it was um, relevant for this episode of Death Metal Podcast. So, um, and it pulled out a couple seven inches too. I don't know what the fuck I did with them. But, um, so yeah, fucking unreleased old school Ripping Corpse. They were a huge uh, kind of like a, a driving force in Jersey for me because they would send flyers to my house when I was like a little kid basically. Just because I had written to them and was like buying a demo or something, so they would send uh, they would send like flyers to my house and about their shows, and they would have shows with like death and like fucking morbid angel and shit. <laughs> so you know, and they were always down the shore, which was pretty far for me, you know, when I'm a little kid. But you know, it was interesting to see who they were playing with, like Revenant, and then. Um, as years passed too, like they kept their mailing list going, and then when they were playing with like a torture crypt or a human remains, which was like one or two or three or four years later, they still fucking I would still get that goddamn flyer, and they would you know from Scott Ruth the singer, he kept it he kept his fucking mailing list tight to be like yo I we have a show at the Brighton Bar like be there fucker, <laughs> you know here's a mail it you know mail out the fucking flyer and the flyers would have like. The same dude who did their demo covers would draw like the fucking the fly the fucking flyer too, man, which was sick. So let's take this to um back to Finland again. Um This isn't my gloom chamber, but this was something I've been uh listening to on and off for the last uh pretty much since I finished episode a little more. <laughs>
What's up, man? I don't know if I cut that off wrong, but what's going on, everybody? So I'm not sure if that was from 91. I wanted to let you guys know, too, Heavy Art Talk on YouTube. Mark Riddick is on there. They're, they were laughing because I went on to say what's up, and they were like, oh, afterwards, he announced to go over there. <laughs> and a bunch of people from our chat went over there, which I want, you know? I, I like other YouTubers, too, man. And Mark Riddick's cool, and so is uh, Lee. So, I mean, it, the show is tight, too fucking so this is the saturday night madness um again i just in case you're tuning in we got new uh shirts and uh some death metal podcast ones they're on our website um if you want to support the show we're going to be giving one away so it's necroharmonic.com you can check it out or big cartel so we got zipper hoodies too um if you want interested in some fucking zipper hoodies man and then this guy said that you need to buy that shit. This is a photo that I took of Blasphemy when I got to see them at um, fucking in Montreal. Now, I put it in black and white because I, you know, this is my personal collection photo. And I know the Blasphemy fans are a little crazy, so this will be on like an album or something. But pretty destructive fucking close-ass photo I happen to get of, um, you know, it's just a really fucking sick fucking pick. For sure, man. So, it needs to be like the fucking spokes fucking thing for this show. The, um, you know, the old demos, you know, the, between the death metal ones, the black metal ones, and then like the atmospheric fucking bands. You know, it's like they were all like very unique in a weird way. Each one, you know, was a little more unique and different. Like, even as you moved into 1996... You know, we're going to, you know, this would step up the pace a bit and also go into a zone where you guys might get a little uncomfortable, but uh, maybe not, man. I mean, I think that this demo was good for 96.
clean flesh. So the show I was at this weekend was like a clean flesh fest. Not really, though. There were some death metal bands, too, like uh, Un- Unilata something. They were kind of in the death metal zone. Less less uh, slam, in a way. There were some hardcore bands. A little bit, a little bit. So there's, um, this, I was listening to this. He's going to take it in a fucking 180 direction, as usual. Check it out. <laughs>
Yeah, that Doom song, that was, that, that vocal, that female vocal was extremely clean, right? <laughs> it was cool, though. Are these guys from Belgium? I'm not sure. I think so. They're pretty, um, they're, you know, like, sometimes I just discover things while I'm, like, it's a daily, daily operation. That's the way I would put it best. Uh, Mike Abominator sent a, a request in here, and this is probably what we'll talk about, stuff like this on our show. That don't even that don't even jive with today's society type shit. It's dirty. No, uh, I don't have it um, downloaded, but I can. I was trying to chop this off at like well, two thousand one. I think I had something that was pretty not. Well, I'll look. So um, the uh, let's see here. Don't throw me off, frames, man. <laughs> sure. Here's a uh, here's this pretty sick one that this band's from Belgium. I like this demo too.
sick one by Dreft. They're from Belgium, obviously. Uh, I remember writing to them, actually. They're pretty obscure, so good uh, demo. And like they, someone said, sick recording. And also, what this is what punk should have been. That was cool, man. I like that comment for some reason. This is what punk should have been. Like, a harder. But uh, punk is punk. Oh, you're from Belgium? Sick, man. That's cool. Yeah, they're from... Uh, I, I remember writing to one of those names there. I think it was the Chris one. So, and they had... They were on Shouse Fred's Apocalyptic Things compilation tapes, which were, like, really... You know, they had, like, all these good bands on there, and then the, the, the addresses were on there, so you could write to them. Here's a um, really seminal classic, you know, from Black, from Black Death like demo like an old one
Death Lunatics. So that was from France. Um, yeah, they've been a little repulsion there too, definitely. Uh, I could feel that too. The the vibe was pretty repulsiony. Um, they could, you know, like the the black death, like kind of morbid angel, kind of, you know, not morbid angel vibe, but like there's some other vibe there too. You kind of fucking feel the under the, you know, the changeover of like thrash metal to death metal. Where things were like you know, a little like the the guitar got a little fun, more funky, you know, like not funky, like uh, fuzzy, and so did the vocals. <laughs> you thought it was a tribute band to Repulsion? <laughs> nah, man, they were old. They were from '87, so they were like Mutilator, and then an '86, I think. So they ran at almost the exact same time as Repulsion ish, like Repulsion a little earlier than that, because they had Genocide. But, I mean, how far do you think a genocide demo spread in 1985 or something, you know? Not far. <laughs> you know? Like, it, 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 like, didn't make it past certain, you know? I mean, it made it to the UK, obviously, because there were all these fucking bands. Either sound like Massacre or sound like fucking Repulsion. But, um, yeah. Fucking, uh, I always want to play this band. Like, they have kind of one of my, I'm, like, just into them. lame so uh, yeah fucking sick band love it so here's uh i guess we could go as far as 2001 which is not too it's pretty still pretty fucking old so yeah buy a lich buy a lich <laughs>
Blister from Cal, I think that's from California. Yeah, so sick. Uh, you love this show? Cool, man. Thanks, Bob Marley. <laughs> Yo, listen, this show wouldn't even exist if there wasn't a chat here. So, like, in a way, you know, this I want people to converge and talk about death metal basically. So, thank you to people that do hit this up. Mike Abominator, my brother Sal from Splatteria says hello. That's awesome, man. Chaos Goat, always appreciate you. Uh, Vesuvius Corpse Flower dropping fucking mad bombs with uh, a lot of band names that people probably never fucking heard of. Jeff, Storms are coming. What's up? Thank you for joining us. Stored uh, Scuzz TV. Oh, sick, man. You like good stuff. Maggot Craft, appreciate you. Uh, definitely the people don't forget the people that uh, do the art that's why I put that link up here this is the uh, literal Lee's channel if uh, Mark Mark Riddick is on there uh, with and they talk about like pens and like drawings and like that's interesting shit man and like we sh you know we should be honed in on our own like things you know like our drawings and like women doing like jewelry you know like leather and paintings and like you know, doing artwork, you know, like, just all that kind of shit is important stuff, I think. So, I mean, what's important, too, is that you guys tune in, and I appreciate you. And, like, Phil, you're always here. Appreciate you. Jesse, uh, tuning in from Finland, I guess, too. Snare Desecrator. I saw you up in the Slack chat yesterday a lot. Stefan Goldberg, appreciate you, man. You always fucking come with the noise. You talk about Death Metal Podcast, like... In the middle of the week. <laughs> so that's hot for me. Um, who else here? Let's see. You guys are, are really what helps do part of the show, you know? Je Jesus drinks Jeff Fuel, man. Appreciate you, bro. War is my name. Brin uh, uh, ben Brain Smasher. Definitely cool dude. Mike. Let's see here. Like I said, Jeff Chapman. Uh, Head Split Records. Sorry we couldn't play your 2024 band stuff. We still love you. The Metal George. Appreciate you, bro. I've been seeing you roll in. Thank you, J Bob Marley. <laughs> so, I mean, Bob Mar I'm all about Bob Marley. Also, Rick Bost I saw from former... He was saying that he was in, he was in Necrotomy and Mausoleum. These were important uh, PA 
like sludge down bands, you know, like in the kind of like the Rochevor type funerous neighborhoods. So these were sick bands. Shout out to uh, Rick. Sick fucking sick motherfucker, dude. <laughs> you know, it's cool that people do pop in here. I saw like Derek uh, from Churchburn in the chat and I saw mad other people like Mike is Mike Vominator. Teddy Tommy always repping. So I appreciate all you guys, man. You know, like it's like the show wouldn't even happen without you guys too, because some of the stuff you talk about, then I might put it on fucking screen, basically, you know. So anyway, um, let's see what we got here. Let's see, um, some uh, from Mexico. I didn't rep represent Mexico. Ninety five. Wilkbersky, who I see sent me a text. So, um, uh, tonight, you know, we played a lot of cool demos, and um, I'd like to, you know, bring some obscure stuff to people's eyes or ears. And then, you know, whoever watches this in the after play, you know, if you're at the gym or whatever you're doing, you know, like, I want to, you know, definitely let people know about good bands. You know, I mean, the, you know, the bottom line is, like, a lot of this, like, Black Death, like, 
stuff is it's like the best you know it's like the heaviest like rage you know and you could like kind of push you know push either rage out of you or i don't know like i don't know it's just that it's brutal it's a good feeling a cost call go <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> that's brutal dude um the uh will kaberski man uh shout out to will kaberski i see him texting me so he was the person that wrote all the old deteriorate shit um yet the band still rests on his riffs the uh i forgot to play this one actually this was like this was mick harris's favorite <laughs> the show man i mean i have to punch people in the face with the demos so yeah that was as zagoth or zagoth uh shredded flesh which was members of uh unseen terror that band that was on like e-rake or whatever that like crust band or i don't even know what they call them they had uh that song garfield for president they were like a, they were like their own genre and that that that, uh, that release is sick so i mean um definitely you know if you listen to something on here yeah hope you do go check it out in your own time obviously and you know give a give us give a whirl to uh zagoth zagoth shredded flesh demo 87 here's a one from uh a band that i wrote to uh and then they did a split seven inch with uh a band that i did a cd with mucopurulent but this band's uh from germany cabal uh, from 94.
from Germany so um, I had busted out a few seven inches I had some New York bands that I have friends with or you know Morpheus uh, Ap uh seven inch this was like a, a seraphic decay skin drill or something it's a big a man, my man Sam who plays in uh, Mortician is the drummer for over 20 years this was his band Morpheus this was Morpheus before it was Morpheus Descends so, and then, uh, yeah, man, sick. Rest in peace to Jeff Raymer as well. This was my boys, uh, from Cattle Press, um, uh, and also the drummer from, um, Dave Witte from Human Remains. So the band originally was called Ev Eviscerate, and then they changed the name to Ab Horror. Um, Joe Capizzi, uh, who, um, is, a. Uh, professor of alchemy in my opinion um he is uh made this uh seven inch years ago 
and uh, he was in a he was in Cattle Press and a lot of other good death metal bands. And then uh, Javier from uh, Sin was on this, and Dave Witty on drums, as you can see. This is an amazing release right here. So if you could seek this out too, and I don't, you know, this is a worthy ass release, man. It's a sick art by Lino on the front, everything. Yeah, Dave Witty's God on this seven inch in particular. It was amazing, man. Cattle Press is the shit, exactly. And then these guys, they did this, and then they did Cattle Press afterwards. So shout out to my man Ed, too, um, and to Joe Capizzi, man. Those guys are cool as fuck, and uh, they've always been quality dudes. So, you know, like, that's that's the coolest thing about death metal, too, and the scene of, like, going out and stuff. <laughs> you know, like, being around people. Like, you really get to meet, like, and see quality people and do shit and drive around and listen to music together or, you know, go on a fucking whatever, go someplace and do some shit if you live locally with them. They still have that Morpheus 7 inch. I stayed at Jeff's uh, house back in Yonkers. He had that big uh, reptile tank. All those snakes and crazy shit there. That's cool, man. I never got to see that. Yeah, man. Fucking Jeff was the man, dude. You know, like, he was he was the cool as fuck, man. Because, like, it would be like the this dude's, like, Spring Valley. Uh, they, they were called Spring Valley Death Crew, basically. And you, Jeff was one of them, you know? And, like, uh... My friends from Jersey, like, we felt like, you know, we're like, oh, there's a whole other fucking gang of motherfucking delinquents to hang out with and but do illegal shit and run around on the street or whatever the fuck we were doing, you know? And, uh, drinking, you know, smoking, smoking substances we're not supposed to smoke to. And then, um, you know, it was just to be like a party scene, like at a bolt thrower show or something. Just a lot of lot of good stuff, man, came out of those days. And Jeff uh, Reamer, rest in peace, man. Fucking cool as fuck, dude. Sam, I've been to Sam's studio uh, where Morpheus Descends recorded some stuff. And I actually did talk to Sam from Morpheus Descends. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, uh, he was at the New Jersey Death Fest. And then uh, he's like, he said that, you know, within X amount of weeks that we should get together and I should go to his house and do a death metal podcast from there. So, we'll see if we can pull that together. And uh, I, w I would love to do it, do an interview with the band and then get some live jams and everything. And uh, we'll do a fucking, we'll do a live death metal podcast and, uh, from Sam's fucking studio, which would be fucking brutal. I have a good idea, too, which is good. Like, kind of do it, you know, like a, the way we did the Embalmer, or the way Embalmer did their thing. Like, we need to kind of do a similar one, you know? You know it, man. You're from Rockaway, so. <laughs> Middletown, man. Um, so, yeah, New York. So let's see here. Let's see what else I didn't play tonight, which is uh, worthy of the fucking death metal demos of all hell. This is one of my fucking favorites. We re I, uh, Necro Harmonic released tons of shit with this fucking band, too, and their LP and cds and i've been supporting them you know since it, you know and they're the coolest motherfuckers dude Thank <laughs> you. 
So, um, also, I wanted to say hello and shout out to uh, Melanie, Melanie Loves Death Metal channel, because she, um, she was showing a crematory release that I had put out with, uh, it was just a denial on tape or whatever. So, shout out to Melody, uh, Melanie. Uh, her channel's cool, man. I mean, she knows her shit. That's what's important in this fucking space. You know, like, I like to hear other people that are talking about, like, actually knowing what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> and not, you know, trying to sell me on some fucking tagline. Nothing, uh, yeah. Yeah, I enjoy her channel, too. I mean, you know, from what I see of it, it's difficult to do a channel and then watch someone else's, too. But, you know, if they do a short or they do something good or, you know, like, I'll fuck with it, you know. Uh, amongst other live casters, too, you know. It's like, if I'm there, then I'm there. <laughs> Obviously, you know, Necron and uh, Francisco, a lot of times, you know, we've connected and done many shows. So, yeah, I mean, fucking YouTube is cool. I mean, if we're just for talking to people, even yesterday, uh, our interview with the NJ Death Fest uh, promoter, Gutter, 
I mean, he did a lot of shit, man, you know? So, this was a good fucking show, and Schlack was funny <laughs> as fuck, dude, so, you know, can't get hurt. Um, if you guys are interested to support Necroharmonic, we got Necroharmonic uh, Undergang shirts, some other stuff. Um, what's this? Oh, those aren't ours. Those are that's just some nuclear blast advertisement. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and also the shirts, the pocket print, and zipper hoodies. If you guys are interested, check the website though. Appreciate everyone that's um, yeah, no god, only slack. <laughs> he was cool, man. He was a fucking maniac, dude. I really enjoyed his episode, man. Like, you know, at least we were, um, and, uh, Lord Marco, man, uh, from Wake in the Cadaver, and he plays drums for Six Feet Under. So I was like, I asked him if, I was like, yo, does, uh, like Chris Barnes catch a lot of shrapnel or what, man, you know? I was like, you know anything about that? You know anything about that? You see that NME? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you, get, you, you gotta know, man. The sort of the, uh, unholy death. It's an important record. So fuck yeah, dude. I was listening to this shit. This is this guy fucking went to jail for killing his own fucking parent, and then then he fucking drove his car off a fucking thing, the fucking off a fucking off a uh, what do you call it? And they made that fucking this record is like venom type shit. So fucking hey, dude. Yeah, he drove off a bridge. Yeah, in Tacoma. Okay. I don't even know where it was, but I had, I had heard after. I, uh, the, um, I thought uh, Unholy Death. I bought this record like years and years and years ago. Like when I first was trying to seek out some like black death metal type shit. Like mayhem -y type shit. And I, I saw that saw this. I was like, damn, man, that's a f that seems like a very fucking evil record. I really didn't even know what the fuck the backstory was on it. But then once I heard the backstory, I was like, holy shit, man. This band's kind of like some black death, man. That was one of the first underground medals you ever got, NME. Cool, man. That's sick. Super sick. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely unholy death record. Like, it's, a son it's on some Venom tip, but it's its own fucking thing. And, like, it seems like no one knew about it, you know? So let's see what else. The, um... Got one or two more things to play here. The, uh... I wanted to show Lori Bravo's letter, but I don't know if I saved it in the right place. This band I used to write to from Holland. Um, they were, uh, they sent me a really, I'm going to see if I could, if I had the tape out, I don't see it, but, uh, they sent me a demo of theirs. I was, I read the rehearsal demo and they reminded me of like mortician and everything. I was like, holy shit. And then they put out a demo after that. It's called the sphere of the rotting in 92. Ob truncation. Oh! <laughs> 
truncation. I laughed because I have looked back to see, like, well, now that I took that NME record, what's the next one? Is it some hip-hop record? And it was, actually. And I pulled it out. Just to show you, Disgustor. It was UTFO, Skeezer Pleaser. So that that's what the record that was next to the NME was. I got this off Discogs. Because I this is a fucking... This is a good pickup, you know? For a hip-hop record. UTFO, man. Old school. Skeezer pleaser. It was probably like two dollars, dollar. Some scum shit, you know? Old old uh the man, uh yeah, that's what happened. Some shit like that. There's a lot of history behind, uh you know, there's a little history story behind NME and then the recording and all that. How's it going, Aaron? So let's see what else we got here. Um I did I wanted to play this band because there's no demo that's better than the demos of this band. And even the second demo was kind of like hidden in the shadows for like three years. <laughs> and so it's kind of cool that uh, both exist.
Wow. So total black death. The heavy metal Fabio. <laughs> What's up, Richard Santos? How you doing, man? I love Texas, my Texas people in the house. So, um, I, I can't do a demo episode without playing Necrovore, man. I mean, there's no way. There's no way. There's certain bands. Yeah, I, I'm going to maybe leave the Rochevore out tonight, you know? Due to contract disputes. But, you know, like, uh, I try to, um,. I try to bring, you know, a lot of weird demos on here. And also, I wanted to also announce uh, next week, next Saturday, the demo, the demolition <laughs> will be with Mike Abominator, who sent me this photo of his fucking some mixed... I said, you know, let's do a show that we mix up a little bit of fucking just not one genre, you know? Where, so he showed me this fucking photo and the fucking 13 demo is in there, motherfucker. And I have some, like one or two of these, but goddamn. So that's sick. So tune in definitely next Saturday um, for that show, man, with Mike Abominator. You start to see some, uh, you know, like I appreciate the people that spread the graphs around and shit. So let's see what, uh, let's see what I did not bring to the show and... If uh, there was a reason, <laughs> this is a ninety nine cranial torment. Warning, warning, this is not a dream, it is a message from the other world. Saturday, me and Mike Abominator are going to flex our demos. He was sending me requests to play on this one, but we're not going to play this one, but maybe next week. Fatal. We could talk about the Fatal discography of their demos, man. I put it out on CD. I don't have it available. To, I, it was laying around, though. Good band. Soul Burns, man. This was like a fucking... Kind of like a... Substitute Morbid Angel. <laughs> so, you got that demo? Oh, they're, oh, you should talk about something else here. Yeah. Cool, man. Appreciate the, uh... Let's see what else that I did not... 
bring to the death metal podcast let's see here I had this too which this is important fucking demo man Scott I'd represent and then you know played alongside Necrovore of course because these bands represent you know the real the real deal man I've been um I've been on a kick with this band I don't know why I listen to him so much but uh
All right, here's the real curveball, though. So we're going to have a Death Metal Podcast giveaway, a contest. U.S. only, because I can't afford to send this anywhere in another fucking country or some shit. We don't make much money when we make sell stuff. Also, shout out to Rich, who bought a shirt from us. I uh, appreciate it. But we're going to be giving one away right now, which is this uh, new Death Metal Podcast pocket print shirt. So I'll mail this to you in the U.S. if you win this contest right now. So that this is, I already wrote down the number. So we're going between 401 and 500. So you pick the number, and then whoever hits the number between 401 and 500 wins your size Death Metal Podcast shirt. So bring on the numbers, suckers. The wheel of death has started to spin. 478, 488, no, no. 436, 4, 630, nope, 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 nope. Nope. Any any lurkers want to make a any? Could you guys that voted twice? Could you let the lurkers take a vote? Because I noticed some vo- like votes start to come in like afterwards. Nobody hit it yet though. It's for a death metal podcast shirt. And last week um, or two weeks ago, John Rand won a Muco Purulent uh, CD. Yeah, the lurkers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, like, you know, let some, it takes a minute for it to, like, kind of catch up, like, so everyone can kind of get a vote in, you know? So, no one hit it yet, though. I wrote it down on a paper, so I'll show it to you at the end, so it's legit shit. It's between 401 and 500. So, this is for, and, you know, we made shirts and zipper hoodies, so if you want to support the channel, please do. <laughs> I want to, you know, I I made them simple, too, without the podcast logo on them. Because I was like, you know what, man? I just want to rep Death Metal. So, no one hit it yet. i seen some closies. I ain't saying where. 503? <laughs> Off the charts, kid. Nobody yet. This is interesting. See, when you bring it into the 400s and not the zero was ones. Not yet. I have not seen the number yet. You can go again. Go ahead. Because people are throwing wild ass numbers. That's why I. That's the thing though. We need. You need to let it like people catch up a little bit. It takes a second. Very close. I saw a very close one. Four ninety nine. No. <laughs> Six sixty six. So this is for a shirt, uh, Death Metal Podcast, new shirts and zipper hoodies are available on both websites, so support it, man. Appreciate the, I appreciate the support by you guys just coming on to watch, man. That's cool, and comment and talk and everything. I saw one number off. One number off. <laughs> it took that long. <laughs> it's the, it just like it's it's weird how you could pick a random ass number between one and a hundred and not one person will fucking say it. So it's kind of cool. But I saw one person hit it one or oh, one number off. They were very close. So win win a prize. But, you know, like, being that we, um, I saw someone two numbers off now. Or maybe one number off, even. One number off again. Come on, man. Take the hint. Read the other numbers. As soon as the first come one comes up. Oh, close, Justin. Come on, man. Somebody got to win it. I couldn't give a better fucking hint than that. (laughs) Am I getting close? (laughs) 
You gotta write down the numbers. <laughs> Two off right there. A Luigi, Luigi. So you were close. Come on, man. I gave too many hints here. One off again. Because I see the numbers before everybody. I think I have the fastest connection on this. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. 200? We're only going between 401 and 500. Two people here have come one... Two or three people have come one number off of this fucking number, dude. Like, multiple times. So, win the Death Metal Podcast prize. Oh, there it is. 463 is the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> So there is the winner. War is my name is the winner of the prize. 463. So that's the winner right there. Just so you know, we'll let it catch up a little bit. We I looked. People were coming close as fuck, dude. Aaron, you came close as fuck. Multi twice, actually. <laughs> also, um, I saw uh, Chris Herrera come close. He was one number off. And there was other people, too, that were fucking close. But nobody, if you look back, no one said that, you know? Oh, I'm actually, I'm wrong. Someone did uh, actually say it. It's right here. So, Profanum, I'll send you a shirt, too, okay? Because I just noticed that. You did hit. So, I'm going to send out two shirts. So, send an email. I'm going to put an email in here. Two people hit here. So, I just noticed that. Sorry. So send me an email with your address and your shot and your shirt size to necroharmonic at gmail.com and I'll mail and we'll make a shirt for you. It just might take a little piece to um, get your size, you know, because I make all my shirts to order. Unless there's a sh the shirt is here, you know. So thank you for winning the contest. So two people won it though, though I have to say, because you hit a 463 since I went back. Congrats. I love the camaraderie. You came close, Chris. When are you going to get an undergang thong? We don't make those yet. Definitely, dude. Four, oh, he said 463 too? Hmm. Let's see here. If it wasn't after... I want to double check this right here. Because this was, I, th I thought the winner was uh, War Is My Name, but then I saw Profanum had a 463 in there. And Justin, Jesus. Jesus, guys. The first one I saw was the Profanum, so let's see here. Yo, I appreciate you guys uh, participating in the contest. Actually, yeah, you're right. Spirit in the asshole world. So you know what? All three, you guys, I got you. Send an email to necroharmonic at gmail dot com, and then you guys are the winners of the earliest, uh, some early death metal podcast merch. Thank you um, to uh, what you call it. Thank you, Richard, for looking back and and noticing that. Appreciate it, bro. There's a lot coming at you when you see um, when you see that. So all three, you guys, send me your uh, address in the US and send me your shirt size and we will mail you a fucking death metal podcast shirt that you want on here so there was a lot of numbers being thrown around everyone is a winner <laughs> so I mean I want to you know I said on the flyer that I was giving something away it's either got to be food or you know so I, yeah, I know there's so many there was other people that hit it too I saw people hitting it, like, right, like, when I was, like, starting to say the names of the people that were close, then the numbers were coming closer and closer and closer, because you motherfuckers are looking back, man. So, 
Waiting for an Anatomia shirt? Cool, man. I'll see what's up, man. I think we just made some, like... Awesome, dude. Free food only on DMP. Exactly. Everyone's high? <laughs> Everyone's high, dude. Just the host. Okay, so uh, back to our demo series. We're going to wind shit out. I want to play um, one or two more. Let's see here now. I wanted to take this back into just a black, like a black feel before I um, get out of here. So I the, the, the furthest demo that I picked out was from 2009. So I didn't go any further than 2009. And this is a band called Of Doom from Finland. <laughs> So that was of doom from Finland. That that we took it we took it all the way to two thousand nine. God damn! But this was still the demo episode. Um, some of my demos are stacked too deep on that one area over there. So I got I got mad uh, tapes and uh, the ASR too, which is like doo -doo 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 -doo, which is close to me now. So you gotta. You got to keep your music equipment where you could reach it. So you could just roll around and play your, you know, just like someone that has a guitar, I'm assuming. I'm trying to, I'm trying to work it like that, you know. And then obviously the turntable too. Within arm's reach of, you know, you got to, you know, I'd like to keep myself in a little fucking box, dude, of fucking death metal. You listen to records like this, you know cheap fucking not cheap but basically like fake obi strip type shit with fucking venom fucking tracks that no you know like angel dust demos and stuff so i hope you guys did i hope i hope the show was in session like you said somebody said uh which is an awesome fucking comment thank you man 
so much uh, awesome stuff never heard today metal school was in session thank you man thank you carl too because for you to say that because you know a lot about uh old stuff then basically you know it's a, that's cool to know that I, i'm in session right now i've got guitars and amps and record players all around my room everything i need exactly <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Bob Marley, for commenting and uh, your love of death metal. You love bootleg records? So do I. I'm, uh, I'm into bootleg records for some weird reason because they seem rarer, right? So, I mean, I sometimes will cop one or two, you know? It depends. You know, like, uh, sometimes I'm disappointed with the sound quality, though, I have to say. But it happens. Yeah, man. Thank you for uh, commenting and everything. Banger of a show. No filler. No killer. All killers, right? So we're going to go out of here with a small interview that uh, is a fucking classic. Thank you for everyone that tuned in to Death Metal Podcast tonight. Look out for us next week. Um, we'll have uh, one to two shows. And then uh, I have new merch that's coming out, actually, that I just got art for. Of a, uh, a really fucking sick band that's put out a few good, super fucking tight releases. So, we'll see what's up. And then, if you guys want to support the channel, you know the deal. Necroharmonic.com. And then, um, we got shirts there. And we got, uh, we got the, the new Death Metal Podcast fucking, uh, shirts on there. The po pocket print hoodies, if you're interested, you know? I try to keep it simple with the fucking hoodie, too. I didn't put the, you know? Cool, man. I'm glad you got introduced to new demos, man. Yeah, definitely. It's a rad fucking cover, right? So thank you, man. Thank you for all you guys that tune in, man. You make the fucking show, dude. I'm telling you that every time, right? And everything that's important, you know, like this scene and this music is important to us, you know, because in the fucking, you know, you know, when you're in the supermarket, you're like, ugh, the fucking, you know, you're like, fuck this place. <laughs> so. I'm out of here with the interview, and um, tonight was a good night. I hope you guys will go back and check our other episode that I'm still bookmarking. And um, later. You know, do you need a sense of humor to be in beastial war lust? Of course. Yeah, yeah, necessity. Sure. Necessity. You don't have a sense of humor, you can't trust no one, I reckon. <laughs> Suicide's bullshit. We endorse killing other people, not yourself. Enjoy it. Kill other people, not yourself. Yeah, we've only someone to told Kurt Cobain that. Now, I'm standing with these guys here at a metal festival, so to me, you don't look strange. But to people watching TV, they might think, do you guys cop a lot of shit? No, never. Has Beastial Wallace started paying yet? Are you guys all still work? No. Some of us are unemployed. Some work. You know? We all work. A couple of us. You know, the others just bum around and be bums. But, uh, I like that. Well, I'm, I'm working at the moment. I'd love to be bumming, so I might go on bum for a while and come back on Pedal to the Metal with Bestial Warlust. Now, when did you guys first get into metal? When did you discover the greatness that was metal? Early 80s. I fucking popped out at mum. <laughs> 81, 82. 81, 82. You're saying it came to you as soon as you popped out of your mum? Did it come to you in the womb? I think I can remember since I was about Hulk. fucking 9, 10. <laughs> What's your name? Andrew. No, come on, I know there's guys in this band called Hell Cunt and Skullfucker. Which, which one's which? Butcher Face Inferno. Which one are you? Butcher what? Face Inferno. Hell Butcher Face Inferno! Bloody hell. Who are you? Damon, Bloodstorm. You're Damon Bloodstorm. Which one are you? Battle Slaughter! Battle Slaughter. Who are you? Skullfucker! Skullfucker! And who are you? I'm, I'm Hellcunt. Hellcunt drums! Now, you seem to be... I want to say a shout out to uh, Skullfucker who came to New, fucking New York in 1990 and we met in the fucking... and I met him in fucking New York City in 1990. So he fucking came from Australia and we met. And this guy's fucker. exceptionally unique in the metal scene. Are there kind of lots of guys that go to the extent that you guys do with makeup and dressing up in Europe? 
Yeah, apparently. I'm not too sure I've never been to one over there, but apparently so from other people who visited over there and experienced it. Oh. Right over there. That's where the main market is in Europe, like Dave was saying, Germany, and for makeup and, you know, or rather like to say corpse paint and stuff like that, it's mainly with Scandinavian countries, it started and now it's infiltrating all over, all over Europe and stuff. But what we do is really, and there's no, there's no mysticism about it. A lot of those bands are really mystical. We're just right out, just war to the core. A lot of them try to class themselves as black metal bands too, but we don't really see ourselves as black metal. We're more just standard death metal, you know, old style influence. Standard death metal, man. See you guys.